Of course, I can use this for 100 beds and I can decide to do about four or even eight of it and it will fit inside this space that I have here now. Four can fit in here, another four can fit in here and in there. That's eight and that's about 800 birds already. So if you can have something like this and you use it for 800 birds to brood, saves on eat, uh, saves on medication for coccidiosis. All right guys, so I made this chicks brooding box that will help you to brood without the use of charcoal, gas, or any heat source for that matter. And you know, this is going to save you a lot of money and you guys liked it and you wanted to see the plan so i'm going to show you the plan today so let's go into the place where this chicks brooding box is and also i actually want you to know that i've started making preparation to show you guys how to ferment your chicken feed the best way in the way that you would lose no nutrient at all you're not going to lose any nutrient because that's a major problem that we have you know most people try to ferment the feed so that they can get better results but in the end they still lose some nutrients in the process so you're not going to lose any nutrient at all in this process i'm going to show you and it's just going to add more nutrients or make the nutrient more available for your chicken so you can see the buckets that are prepared to do the feed fermentation it's all waiting for you here and just so you know, the chicks are almost two weeks now. So we can say that the method has been tested okay. We are using this method, they are almost two weeks and without any mortality as a result of the method that we are using. So this is sure going to work for you. All right, viewers, we are here and welcome back to DIY Hagrid, your number one animal scientist and your poultry success partner. And to those of you who are yet to subscribe, if you are a poultry farmer or you are considering going into poultry for any reason, this is one channel that you want to stay glued to. I get to give you tips and um, information that will help you succeed in poultry farming venture. All right, so before we go into what we have to do today make sure that you subscribe to the channel you hit that subscribe button if you are yet to do so and also hit the notification bell so you get notified when i post new videos all right so come on let's go Okay, so this is the part that will be facing you, but for convenience, for a better view, let me go to the other end. Alright, so this is the lead, and like I explained earlier, from here to this side, which is the same as what we have here, is 5 feet, and from here to here is 28 inches the same as this 28 inches and the height of the cage from here you remove this from here to the to the bottom of it is 30 um 34 inches it's 34 inches but the part that is holding the bird from here to this part is just 18 inches the part that is holding the bird from here from here to here is just 18 inches so that's basically the uh, key measurements you need to take another thing you want to see is the brazing inside yeah I forgot to tell you the upper part of this just has the same size with the frame of the door and everything is just a skeletal structure it's net actually that is keeping the birds confined inside here so it's just uh, the wood that you use as a skeleton every other part is just netting so let me show you the inside of it okay so you can see the supports that we added we added this and this the same on this part yeah you can see the nail here this is the nail holding it so and this is another one so the same thing that is there you just need to divide it into like three equal parts so to have to act as a support in case you're resting on this part it won't go down so that's a support and the same thing for the base <clears throat> because you're going to be adding your wire mesh okay so we have the two type wire mesh here we have the smaller one the chicken nets the hexagonal one something like this yeah and we have the bigger one 
Uh, okay, I'll show you the beyond what it looks like in case you're not seeing it clearly here. But that's yeah, that's the bigger one there. That's the one that you you have underneath, and you place the chicken net on top just so that their legs would uh, be able to stand firmly without having to fall all the time. You may still have occasions of one or two that will have their legs stuck, so you have to keep watch for the first two days or so. For brothers, you may not have any issue here, but because of the size of these cockerels, I had like two of them who got stuck and I just rescued them and they were fine afterwards. Of course, to hold the door, you will need your hinges, yeah? So we have two of them here, one here and one on this side. So you use your hinges to hold the door in position. And one other thing, you can see as I open the, do the door, it opened and it's rested on something. It's, oh, it's been held in position. So this is the secret. There's a wood that was nailed to the back of, um, okay, so this, this is what is holding it. We, we nailed this wood to the back of the cage just as a support for this um, door, for the door frame. Well, as far as I'm concerned, this is the most interesting part of it. The tire that makes it really movable that makes it flexible so this is the kind of tire that is used let me try to zoom in to show you okay all right so if you ask me this has really helped me a lot imagine having to buy either charcoal or use gas to build this i may be spending some thousands of naira and the fact that i had to use money to build this does not mean i'm spending more money in the long run because i can use this time and time again i can use it for several batches and i think this cost me roughly 20 something thousand naira and in case you are saying oh wow, it's just about it's just less than 100 bears of course i can use this for 100 bears and i can decide to do about four or even eight of it and it will fit inside this space that i have here now four can fit in here another four can fit in here in there that's eight and that's about 800 birds already so if you can have something like this and you use it for 800 birds to brood saves on eat uh saves on medication for coccidiosis you won't have coccidiosis as much as you have on the floor and other bacterial disease too will be minimal. In fact, I have not had to treat this one with any bacterial or with any antibacterial, whether organic or synthetic. So they would be fine for the most part because they are not really in contact with their poop. And it's just so good. It's just so good. So overall, this is incredible. This is highly beneficial for anyone who is considering it. And it's just a wonderful innovation. Another advantage to this is the issue of rodents rodents would not really get inside this one you can seal it you can make it rodent proof you know they don't they just walk around even if they're around your farm they don't have access inside this cage so it's very good so that it prevents the several diseases that are caused by rodents in case you have not seen that video where i talked about the harm that rodents can cause on your farm you can check this link up here and you see the video there so rodents are very terrible on your farm and you don't want them to even get or come around your cheeks so this is also very important for that use for that purpose and overall well overall you have to be thinking long term before you set out to do something like this because for each batch you, I, I know for sure if, I'm, if i were to use it i won't be spending up to 20 something thousand for this batch but if i think long run over the next five batches 10 batches and especially for those who are doing brood and sale this is just so perfect the trouble of going around to look for wood shavings sawdust whatever you use is out of it is out of it you can just put sand even if you don't have sawdust to put here and sawdust is mostly free so you can just put it underneath so that you can top it on the poop get another layer of poop top it on the poop before you then pack everything out as your manure 
okay so this rules out you going out there to search for wood shavings and for most part you get to buy it and it increases the cost of brooding so high chicks are already expensive nowadays so anything you can do to cut costs chicks are expensive the feed is expensive and customers are not really willing to up their price so anything you can do as a producer to reduce the cost of production is welcome is a welcome um, goal and you should just pursue it all right so that will be all for today don't forget if you are to subscribe to the channel it's very important that you subscribe i'm your number one animal scientist and your poultry success partner if anyone is concerned about your success in poultry it is me so don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the like button if you think that you like this planned video all right so thank you and see you in the next one